Everybody aware it's an intensive retreat? Okay. Um, I'm sure everybody has a little bit different of an expectation of what is this intensive retreat? What will it be like? <coughs> what do we do? And how do we hold the retreat so that it is intensive? So first of all, I'll just explain right out front. What is this all about, intensive retreat, compared to normal retreat, or non-intensive? Um, before I continue, though, just a reminder, if you have your cell phones on you, um, please turn it to the silent mode, or turn it off. It's better to turn it off for the day. <coughs> If not, if it's in your coat and you need to turn it off after we have our first break, we'll give everybody time to turn off the devices. That's actually one way in which we can make this an intensive retreat so that we can isolate ourselves from all of the usual distractions and noise of daily life. Uh, is it safe to say that a lot of the distraction comes from our devices? or at least our ability or inability to restrain <laughs> from using them too much. Texting, using the phone, computers. So part of the retreat is actually to put aside all of these daily life habits that we can find distracting. <coughs> That's the first part. We basically isolate ourselves from all of those things in daily life that can be a burden to us. Another thing that makes it intensive in general is actually you. Or all of us. All of us practicing in a way that allows us to focus completely on the method of practice. And I'll talk more about what is the method of practice or methods that we can use. <clears throat> In general though, it's up to us to make it intensive. And how would we do that? Well, for example, we don't allow ourselves to do anything that the retreat center doesn't want us to do. There are many different rules and guidelines. <coughs> I won't go over all of them. I'll just emphasize the most important guidelines that can help us make a solid, cohesive, concentrated retreat. And basically those guidelines are, like I mentioned, number one, the devices. Number two is silence. Is everybody prepared to be silent for the day? Maybe some aren't, which is okay. Um, if you found out just now that it is a silent retreat, you could be happy anyway. It's a new experience. A day without speaking at all. <coughs> Which is actually a kind of gift. Because all of the speaking... <coughs> all of the speaking, communicating, of course not just through speech, but through, through texting or through writing, using words all day to communicate. It's a very useful thing, and we can accomplish a lot through it. But with all of those words, language, communication running in our minds, it can also be a burden and make it, <coughs> and make it very difficult for us to settle the mind and find some clarity. So, that's probably the most important guideline. Silence. On your part, at least. It's my job to talk. <coughs> I'll try not to talk too much. If I talk too much, then it's not a meditation retreat, it's a, some kind of lecture. But at the same time, I, I want to give enough instruction so that everybody feels comfortable with the activities, that you know what we're doing, and so that you can apply yourself wholeheartedly to the method of practice throughout the whole day. <coughs> and 
the intensity of it also depends on you. And how is that again? One following guidelines. The other is if you can apply yourself seamlessly to the method. What does seamlessly mean? <clears throat> well, for example, when it's not seamless, that's when we sit on the meditation cushion, we try our best to concentrate, and then, ding, when time is up, we open our eyes, stretch and move very quickly, jump off the cushion, and we go do something else. Most likely, our mindfulness or our wakefulness is broken. We probably become scattered. And even at, <coughs> even at a retreat center, we get up from meditation, we feel pretty good, we feel pretty calm, everybody's quiet, everybody's really working hard, but then we're tempted to kind of just look around, see what's happening, see what other people are doing, see what other people look like. Uh, oh, look, there's some books over here. We start to look at the books. Or if we're really bored, we'll start to like read the labels on the meditation cushions and you know, really stare at the design and say, wow, that's a beautiful design. I never noticed that. <coughs> when our practice is not seamless, when we let ourselves go too much, we may find anything to distract ourselves with, even uh, a crack on the wall, start to look at it, pick at it. So seamless means that, <coughs> <coughs> seamlessness in practice is when we apply ourselves at all times, not only on the cushion, but when it's time to finish, as I'll explain later, we slowly transition, slowly move ourselves, Maintaining mindfulness of all of our movements, all of that transition in between sitting. And then, <coughs> when we get up, walking, just walking from here to the bathroom, or walking from here to get some water. And thank you very much. <laughs> Drinking water, when we have the chance to drink water, we can drink mindfully. Drink and make drinking our method. One way to do that is, I've actually seen some people, they use both hands. Maybe sometimes we just use one hand to drink. We use both hands. We, first of all, we, we change a habit. For the sake of mindfulness, we just change our habit. So we use two hands. Hold the cup, bring it to our lips. And we have a sip. We really experience every single activity that we do here on retreat. <coughs> and in this way, our method our mindfulness is less broken, more seamless. There's less gaps in between the time that we're mindful and forgetful. <clears throat> is it possible to be perfectly seamless? It's possible, but it's difficult. So although our ideal and our goal is to be seamless in the practice, don't feel bad if you often find yourself distracted. And if you do, catch yourself looking at the book titles or you know, looking at the cushion. It's okay. <coughs> what then makes it intensive is that as soon as we notice that our mind is drifting, that our attention is becoming distracted, as soon as we notice to come back then to the method. This is the basic approach that really creates an intensive retreat. And all of us create that together. It's not that we're going to use some extremely harsh uh, rules or techniques, you know, shouting and hitting that you may see in like the Zen uh, tradition, <coughs> which has its place at a certain time. On this one day retreat, we won't have shouting and hitting. <laughs> 
safe to say that at this point, we all, we all need a more of a tender, loving care. We need to relax into ourselves first before the more uh, harsh or uh, powerful techniques are useful. <clears throat> so, this is how we create our intensive retreat. I'd also like to know how many people how many people are here for the first time to this place? Could you raise your hand? Okay, good, quite a few. <coughs> welcome to you all. A special welcome. How many of you are here doing meditation for the first time? Anyone? Okay, good. <laughs> it's very good. If, if you were here for the first time doing meditation for the first time ever, that's also good. It'll be a good experience. <coughs> but as I mentioned, um, to be seamless really requires that we have a foundation of practice to start with so that we don't have to spend too much time on the basics, how to sit, how this and that. So I won't spend too much time with that. It looks for the most part that everyone knows how to sit. It looks fairly comfortable in the sitting posture. Is that safe to say? Your posture, you feel okay with it? Comfortable? No. No? I thought you need a chair. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, I think it's you can feel free to use the chair, right? You can make some space for yourself back there. basically leaving early, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anybody else have last minute concerns before I continue? Everybody fairly comfortable where you're at? Warm enough as well? Yes. <laughs> If you're not warm enough, we have some more blankets there. And if you want, you could even sit with your coat. If you happen to be sitting in a drafty spot, uh, it's best not to have draft on your body. Wear your coat, wear your scarf, whatever you need to feel comfortable. Um, <clears throat> however, <coughs> it's best not to be too warm. If we're too warm, what happens? fall asleep. Even if we don't fall asleep, if our body is too warm, we start to feel very cloudy mentally. And that's not a good ingredient for meditation. <coughs> so in addition to that guideline of silence and being seamless with our practice, another thing that helps us to maintain a mindfulness of our whole body, behavior, and daily living is to help keep our place tidy. So at certain points in the retreat, we may stand up. <coughs> maybe we'll do walking meditation, maybe we'll do this or that. Whenever we stand up from our cushion to do an activity, or if you leave your place to go to the rest <coughs> restroom, if... <coughs> <clears throat> if you could just fold your uh, blanket or towel or whatever is at your place, fold it, make it tidy, and then leave. This way we're always mindful of the space and keeping it tidy for ourselves to maintain that mindful awareness of behavior and also to keep it tidy for others because it's kind of tight 
We don't want to be tripping over each other's things. <coughs> another, um, another guideline for the, the Chan Hall here, the meditation hall, let's keep our water outside. Uh, this way we won't have any accidental spills and also so we don't have the temptation to have a sip during meditation, which I've seen before. You know, sitting for a while, check the time, uh, you've got a few minutes left, let me just have some more tea. That makes it difficult to be seamless with the method. At that point, our mind has drifted from our sitting method to something else being concerned about time or just wanting some kind of something to grab onto grab our tea grab this grab that <coughs> <coughs> and during the sitting I encourage everyone to sit as still as possible during the sitting meditation now if you need to move it's okay to shift your position. That's actually the advantage of the talks. You get to move a bit. <laughs> and you get to, like some of you have your knees up. Sit with your knees up. You could even stretch a leg out during the sitting period. That's totally fine. <coughs> but during the sitting meditation, the best way to help us stay seamlessly with the sitting method is to sit perfectly still as still as possible. Of course, if you notice that you're, all of a sudden you're leaning way off, slowly straighten or adjust your posture however you need. But even if your legs really hurt, even if it feels very difficult and painful to sit still, I encourage everyone to still maintain that still posture <clears throat> and I'll explain later on why is that maybe some of you already know why just trust me for now even if it hurts and you feel like jumping up and running away maintain the posture relax yourself and you'll get through it <clears throat> So those are the basic guidelines. Simple enough? Easy to remember? Silence, mindfulness, tidiness. Um, as far as the, the content of the retreat, does everybody know what we'll be talking about today? Some? Not sure? Okay. I always wonder because we put some text underneath the the posting, and I wonder how many people actually read any of that. <laughs> Most people just say, oh, one day retreat, intensive, cool, I'm going. <coughs> Other people need to see the details. What is intensive? Let me read this. <laughs> uh, I just wonder the percentage of people who actually read it. <coughs> the, uh, the material of the teaching for this retreat comes from a text called the Platform Sutra. In Chinese, it's called the Liu Zhu Tan Jing. And this is, it's called Sutra. It's a text not spoken by the Buddha, not a record of the Buddha's talk, but a, a record, a compiled record of teachings, talks, and encounters of the sixth ancestor master in the Chan lineage. His name is Master Huineng. Has anyone heard of this teacher? Sixth ancestor master, Master Huineng. Okay. A few. <coughs> in the tradition of Chan Buddhism, which developed in China, in this time period it was the Tang Dynasty, and it was around the 6th or 7th century. He was probably the most influential teacher 
in the Chan tradition. And why is that? It's because he took very complicated, detailed, uh, in-depth teachings from sutras, discourses, and other recorded teachings of the Buddha and um, later disciples. And he simplified them. He expressed them in a way which was very simple and very direct and very down to earth. <coughs> very down to earth. <clears throat> which takes all of this amazing uh, wealth of Dharma, of the Buddha's teachings, and he, what's the word? Um, they smelted it. Or, uh, there's another word, you take a, a rock filled with ore and you cook it down. Is it smelting? What's that word? Condense. Huh? Condense. Not only condense. Smelt. Smelt? Yeah. Um, and extracted the most essential part of the teachings and presented it in a way which is easy to understand and easy to relate to our method. So that's why I've chosen the teachings, and I'll go into it in more detail later. And I'll talk about how it relates to the practice, how to use it, not just thinking about it, how to apply it. <coughs> but to start for this one-day retreat, although it's intensive, and we want to be seamlessly on the method. It's also very important that we relax. And that may almost sound contradictory to being seamless. Where when, when people hear something like, the practice has to be intensive, seamless, and unbroken immediately, <laughs> you know, the concentration phase happens. <laughs> Without even us knowing it, we start to use force and tension to try to rein in our distracted mind and in a way to uh, bind it up to the method. We don't want to do that. It's not going to be helpful. We may not notice it though. One way to Notice if you are using a bit too much force. Get into the habit of being aware of your facial muscles. So, even now, is your brow tense? Um, I could see some people sitting with their eyes closed, their brow is tense. Especially with our eyes closed, we may not notice it. But if we get into the habit of being aware of our facial muscles, especially, that can be a very quick sign of if we're trying to force it. Because very slowly and gradually we may have this, the brow becomes tense, and even our mouth may start to turn down, right? When we're tense or in a bad mood or really resisting something, this is what happens. Yeah? You can even try it right now. Just. You know what it feels like when a mouth is tight? <laughs> <clears throat> so, seamlessness does not mean tension. We can have a very relaxed, seamless approach to the practice. So, there's a saying that you can keep in mind. It could be a mantra for today's practice and for practice in general. <coughs> um, the Chinese saying, uh, my teacher used to say this quite often, which is uh, shen jin fang song, relax your body and mind, gong fu mian mi, but keep your effort at practice seamless. It's much shorter and, and uh, concise in Chinese, but relax body and mind, but seamless effort. We say that together. Relaxed body and mind. Seamless effort. And 
seamless effort. So whenever you find yourself at any point becoming tense, whether it's because maybe you feel nervous, or maybe you're just trying very hard to be seamless, relax. <coughs> relax into whatever that activity is. If it's sitting, relax into your sitting posture. If you're walking, use the movement of walking as an opportunity to relax into that. <coughs> when you drink, also experience that. What is it like to really take my time to have a sip of this water in a very relaxed way? Just experiencing all of these activities in a relaxed and mindful repose. This is how we can truly make this an intense and beneficial retreat. forgotten anything, any procedures or details that we need to let everyone know. For those of you who came in a bit later, we'll use uh, the bathroom. There's one on the first floor here next to the kitchen. There's another restroom on the second floor. As soon as you go up the stairs and make a right. <coughs> Again, for the water, feel free to take a cup inside the kitchen. I'll write your name on it. Use that. But then once you finish your water, let's keep it all at the water station. <clears throat> 